Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, and this is what you need to know about Forstner bits. Most woodworkers start out using spade or paddle bits to bore large holes in wood. But before long, they realize that the far better solution is a Forstner bit. Because Forstner bits are designed to cut clean, flat bottom holes, whether it's at 90 degrees or at an angle, or even overlapping holes, or holes that hang off the edge of a workpiece. These tasks come in handy as your woodworking projects become more advanced. The problem is, there's a lot of different types of Forstner bits out there, and the differences go beyond just what they look like. So let's try to clear up some of the confusion. The biggest differences that you're likely to see in Forstner bits are found in the guide rim, this outer part of the bit. The rim is what severs the fibers around the hole's perimeter. It guides the bit at the beginning of the cut, which prevents it from skipping and walking across the top of the material, and it controls the accuracy and the repeatability of the hole's size. So this is a critical feature. There are a lot of different rim designs, but if you go into your local hardware store or home center, you're likely to find three major types. You have the sawtooth rims, continuous or knife edge rims, and wavy rims. Now what's the difference? Sawtooth rimmed Forstner bits are also sometimes called multi-spur bits. The teeth work much like the ones on your table saw blade. They cut into the fibers around the perimeter of the hole, while the main cutters shave the wood up from the bottom of the hole. Because only the points along the rims do the cutting, there's less friction, and therefore less heat builds up. That means you can run these bits at slightly higher speeds and theoretically make faster cuts. The downside though of the sawtooth rim is that it's less effective at guiding the bit into the cut. You may think that it's that center point that does all the guiding, but like I said, that outer guide rim is critical, and the sawtooth style tends to bite into the surface of the wood less effectively at the start of the cut, sometimes slightly skipping or shifting the bit to the side, which can spoil the edge of the hole. Sawtooth rims are also often a poor choice when boring at an angle, because those teeth tend to chatter on top of the work surface, and they can result in some rough cuts. They also produce a rougher cut when the bit isn't fully engaged in the wood, such as when you're overlapping holes or you're cutting a hole that hangs off the edge of your workpiece. Continuous rim bits get their name from their solid knife-like rims. These solve some of the problems that those sawtooth rim bits suffer from. They score the fibers around the perimeter of the hole, which creates a cleaner cut with less tendency to skip or walk across the surface of the workpiece, especially when you're boring at an angle or when the bit isn't fully engaged within the wood. The downside is that all of that rim is in constant contact with the wood, so it builds up more heat, and heat dulls bits. So you have to be careful at what speed you run continuous rim bits, and you have to pay attention to your feed rate, or you're gonna find they get dull fast. Wavy rim bits are designed as a compromise between sawtoothed and continuous rim bits. Wavy rims do have points, but they're more comparable to knife edges than saw teeth. The unique wavy grind breaks up the shavings more so they can be ejected easier, and that keeps the hole cleaner and the bit cooler. There's also less of the rim doing the actual cutting as compared to continuous rim bits, which further reduces heat buildup. Yet the rim is still effective in guiding the bit cleanly into the cut, whether it enters at 90 degrees or at an angle or overhanging the edge of the workpiece. So those are the most common types of Forstner bits you're likely to encounter. Which should you buy? Well, when a Forstner bit is new, all three styles are generally gonna make a clean cut. But as you start to use them more, one of them seems to perform much better in my opinion. I gravitate towards the wavy rim bits. They cut cleanly, like a continuous rim bit, but they stay cooler, like a sawtooth rim bit. And unlike the sawtooth bits, they perform well in those instances where you may have to cut at an angle or make overlapping cuts, such as when mortising. Several manufacturers are making wavy rimmed bits now, but quality matters as much as design. So don't just go out and buy the cheapest ones you can find. Cheap bits are poorly sharpened, they wear out quickly, and the holes will be inconsistent in size and cut quality. There are some tools that you can compromise on. I'm not against buying inexpensive tools when they're the right ones, but drill bits and Forstner bits should always be the best quality you can afford. I own bits from several manufacturers, but my favorite are the fish bits. 
They are the only company that I know of that still forge their bit in the old-fashioned ways. They've been doing it in Austria since 1946, and forging produces a higher quality of steel, so the bits last two or three times as long as the cast steel bits that others are making. I know people are going to say, well, Fish is a sponsor, so of course you're going to say theirs works the best. So I performed my own test to see if I could kill a Fish bit. So what I did is I took a chunk of maple that's been sitting outside my shop for a few years, and I started boring holes into the end grain, which is much harder to cut than the long grain you typically work with. I fed the bit fast and hard. I didn't back it out to clear away the chips and help the bit to cool down. I was really trying to overheat and dull the bit. When I got done with one side, I flipped it over and I started on the other side. Now remember, this is maple end grain, some really tough stuff. I abuse this bit in ways that are well beyond what the bit is going to go through in several years of regular use in your shop. But after about a hundred of these holes, I tested it again on some veneered plywood and it's still cut as clean and fast as when it was new. So this might not be a scientific test, but it made me a believer. I do admit that the full sets of the fish bits are a little pricey, but maybe you don't need to get the full set at once. I'll put a link to them in the notes below this video. Just check them out and if you want to get like a half inch and a three quarter, maybe a one inch, just the bits you're going to use most often, and then the rest you can pick up as you need them for projects in the future. At least that's what I'd do. But whatever brand you go with, I hope this little lesson in the types of bits helps you bore cleaner holes in your shop. Be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always full of great woodworking tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyDubs.com. Happy boring!